Thank you to the organizer for the, for the invitation. So, indeed, I'm going to speak about uh, something which, uh, on, the, on the basis, is not exactly finance. Uh, the model I'm going to describe is uh, originally motivated by some application to neurosciences. But it turns out that I feel that it might be applied in some way uh, to risk modeling, and then I would like to present to you this model, and maybe some people or one person in the audience will tell me that indeed uh, it could be used or adapted in some way uh, to risk modeling. So this is really uh, for me the opportunity to uh, to present to you another model, and then to discuss uh, at the end of the of the talk. So. Uh, I must say that this is uh, a joint work with some uh, some people in Nice, so James Inglis and Etienne Tanré from INRIA, and uh, Sylvain Rubenthaler also from the University of, uh, of Nice. So to start with, uh, I would like to, to present to you the basic motivation. And uh, so once again, the motivation is not in finance, but uh, in neurosciences. The point is to discuss some very, very simple model for describing the interaction between neurons in a population of, uh, of neurons and to see how uh, they are connected uh, one with each other. So just to start, you assume that you have N neurons, so capital N, and you have the very, very simple uh, principle, the following one. When you have one neuron, let's say number i, that fires, so fires means that it emits, it emits a signal, uh, then instantaneously all the other neurons in the population feel this fact, feel the fact that the, uh, the neuron number i uh, has just emitted a signal. And clearly you see it, it makes some interaction between the, the neuron number i and the other neurons, and you may guess that there are two types of possible interactions. The first one is excitatory, which means that uh, when I fires, uh, the other neurons are more likely to fire, so to emit a signal. But you may also assume that it might be, uh, instead of excitatory, it might be inhibitory, in the sense that when I fires, uh, the other neurons are less likely to fire. And what I'm going to use is a mean field model, and I'm going to show you the, the mean field interaction with it, which is behind. Uh, just before going uh, uh, one step further into, into the modeling, uh, let's say uh, what I would like to, to discuss in, in, the, uh, in the framework of finance, what I would like to replace, uh, uh, so instead of neurosciences, it should be a risk modeling, and so instead of neurons, uh, we could have companies. And then uh, instead of uh, considering one neuron firing, we could consider one company. And when there is a default of the company, uh, all the other companies feel uh, these defaults. And so we can guess that there could be a loss in the, in the capital of the uh, other companies. Uh, and we will see that we, we will be much more interested in the uh, excitatory, uh, excitatory case. Okay, so that's, that's the basic goal of my, uh, of my talk. And to start, uh, or to, to go on, uh, I'm going to discuss the behavior of one single neuron. So for the moment, you just consider one isolated neuron. It is not connected with the other neurons, so we will see that in the next slides. So. Uh, in neurosciences, we, we describe the state of one neuron by its potential. So this is some electronic potential. I'm not going to describe uh, the behavior from the biological, biological point of view, but this is really some ele electronic, electric, I'm sorry, uh, potential. And so we assume that the potential has some dynamics. So I'm going to denote by Vt the potential of the neuron at time t. 
And so you assume that it starts from some initial value. I'm going to denote this initial value VR. I'm going to explain you why R in the SQL. And then the dynamics are of very, very simple shape. There is some drift, which uh, corresponds to the inner behavior of the, of the neuron. The basic example for the drift, which is used in neuroscience, is very, very simple. You see that this is Anstalumbeck drift, or linear drift. And then you have two things. There is one signal, so IT is a signal which comes from outside, and so this is what this is the input uh, of the neuron. And there is some noise. It might be the noise on the signal, or it might be the noise on the on the uh, behavior, the inner behavior of the of the neuron. And so you say, well, you have this potential. It evolves, and when the potential is too large or too big, when it reaches some threshold the neuron fires, which means that when the potential is too large, the neurons emit some signal. So basically, you have this uh, stopping time, and you say when the potential is larger than some threshold VF, so F for firing, then the neuron fires, we also say the neuron spikes. And then when it spikes, it emits some signal, it goes on to the brain, and then we assume that the potential goes back instantaneously to the reset value VR. So the R is for reset. So you see the potential goes to the threshold. And when it reaches the threshold, it goes back to the uh, reset value. And then you start again the dynamics of the, uh, of the neuron. So you see that this is the, the basic modeling for one neuron. And now, uh, this is one of uh, my goal in this, uh, in this talk, is to discuss with you about uh, a possible application or possible translation of this uh, into finance. So what I'm going to say is very, very simple, because I'm not at all specialist, but this is just to show you the, the kind of things I would like to, to do or to discuss, if possible, with uh, one of you. So I would like to replace the, uh, the potential by the depth, let's say the depth of a company. And so you assume that the depth has some dynamics. It might not be the, this uh, very simple dynamics. We can think of more complicated drift. That's not a big deal. And then once again, some signal uh, describing the external environment of the company and some noise. And then you assume that you have this default time. So when the depth is too big, then there is a default. And so there is a kind of bankruptcy. And then we can assume that, I guess this might be very criticizable, but it could be a very simple modeling. When there is a bankruptcy, so the company disappears, and so there is a new one which is created, and it restarts with a zero depth. And then you go on into the, into the dynamics. So this is one single neuron, but now you have to connect this with uh, other neurons, or so other companies. And so uh, this is uh, my, uh, my next slide. My next slide. Um, so, once, ag once again, instead of having one neuron, we, we consider now n neurons or n companies. And the connection on the interaction between the neurons or the companies uh, is in the, in the following way. So, we assume that the signal ii, so i, this small i, is the uh, number of the neuron. And so, the signal which is uh, put into the dynamics of the neuron number, uh, number i depends on the, on the state, on the past uh, of, the, of the other neurons or the other companies. So you see that the signal uh, depends on the other potentials or on the other depths. Uh, and a typical, a typical interaction uh, which is used uh, comes from the statistical mechanics and consists in assuming that the interaction is of mean field type, which means that the way you depend on the population is through the empirical measure of the system. So you see that the way you feel the other neurons is exactly through the empirical measure associated to the other neurons. Uh, if needed, you can assume that this is over all the j's from 1 to n. Here I just removed j is equal to i, but there is no difference in the asymptotic analysis, so you can put uh, also j is equal to i in this, uh, in this measure. So this is basically the empirical measure of the system. 
you have to describe a certain noises and one very, very simple case, which is not uh, the only one to, to, to consider, but this is a, a starting point. You say, well, this, the noises WI are inner noises in the sense that they are proper to each of the neurons. So from one neuron to another neuron, the noises are completely independent. So they have independent random motions, but you could also try to consider the case when the noises are correlated. And then this is the uh, typical example which has been considered in the uh, in neurosciences. Uh, this is the, the way the signal, so this is a simplification, but basically this is the, the crucial part of, this, uh, of the signal. So this is the, the way the signal depends on the other neurons. So you assume that the, the signal that you receive at time t is just a counter. So this is a counter that counts all the all the spikes or all the defaults uh, that appeared on the other neurons before time t. So you see you have this sequence of, uh, of uh, this family of neurons and up to time t you look at the number of, uh, of neurons that have spiked and the number of times they spiked. So uh, it seems to be a quite complicated formula. You divide by n just to normalize and you multiply by some uh, some factor alpha. I'm not going to assume that alpha is equal to one because as you will see that the value of alpha is of great importance for the, for the analysis. So what it means exactly this, this choice, it means that when I spikes or when the company I defaults, instantaneously, exactly at the same time, everybody uh, jumps and the size of the jumps is exactly alpha over n. So in the dynamics, instantaneously there is a um, a jump in the dynamics and so everybody uh, receives a sort of kick and this kick is alpha over n. So you see that uh, the kick may be uh, of positive or negative magnitude according to the, uh, to the sign of alpha. If alpha is positive uh, for the neurons it means that when one neuron fires the other neurons are more likely to fire so we will say that uh, the, the, the modeling is excitatory and if alpha is negative, this is inhibitory. And if you, you change uh, neurons into companies, so I will, I will discuss the case when this alpha is positive. So you see that what happens is that when there is a default in one company, all the other companies uh, register a loss. And so this loss is exactly alpha over n or the depth increase increases by alpha over n. And so this is uh, purely uh, instantaneous. Um, so this is my, uh, my modeling when you have n neurons. Uh, I'm going to assume that this alpha is completely independent of i. So this is the same for all the neurons, which means that uh, basically my neurons or my companies are exchangeable. So they are, there is a lot of symmetry in the system. Uh, what is the, the mathematical goal, or one of the goals, is to pass to the limits when n tends to the infinity, just to see what happens when you have a large population of, uh, of neurons. This is what we call the makin vlasov uh, version. So the makin vlasov version of the modeling is basically you put n is equal to infinity in the, in the modeling. And so the, I, I remind you of the, the basic mechanism of the makin vlasov interaction. So this is just to say that instead of considering the interaction of one neuron with n other neurons, or one company with n other companies, you consider one single neuron or one single company, which is to say typical, uh, so you have a typical particle, and the interaction is with the law, the, the own law of the particle, which is to say that the particle interacts with its own law, its own distribution. So this is the uh, the, the basic principle for the Mac inverse of theory is to replace the interaction with all their particles with the interaction with the own distribution of the particle, theoretical distribution. The problem is that with the model I have, uh, I cannot apply the usual results, the usual results on, uh, on Mac inverse of SDEs to pass to the limits. The reason is that this kind of interaction is very, very singular because the point is that when there is a default, everybody registers uh, a loss and this is since this is instantaneous uh, this is singular and so once again it does not fulfill the usual assumption uh, for the Mackin vs of theory so you have to to look at the details and to see how it works to try to pass at the limits 
Uh, but still, you can guess what the limit should be. So um, first, I'm going to show you what the limit should be, and then we will try to discuss uh, the limit model. Uh, so th so the, the, the basic principle is, is this one. So you see that if you go back to the interaction, uh, you see that, let's say, num neuron number j or company number j, because of this 1 over n, has less and less influence on the neuron number i when n tends to the infinity, which is to say that there is some decorrelation between the particles when n tends to the infinity. So basically, you have decorrelation, but you also have some exchangeability in the system. So you expect that there is some law of large number behind when n tends to the infinity. And so, uh, meaning that you have a law of large number is meaning that you can replace this empirical mean by a theoretical mean, and so you expect that in the limits, the, uh, the dynamic of one given company or one given neuron in the system is the potential. This potential, you still have the drift, so this is the very simple drift in neurosciences. And so you replace the mean field interaction by this mackin vlasov interaction or the, by this... Uh, uh, mean, uh, mean value, theoretical mean value of M. And what is M? Well, M is just the number of defaults for a typical company up to time t. So there is a counter of the number of defaults, and you take the mean, and then you plug this into the dynamics. And now you see the reason why this is quite singular as dynamics, because you see that there is no integral here. So nothing says that this quantity is differentiable. So nothing says that you can write a differential formula a differential form for this uh, for these dynamics, and basically that's that's the problem we have for discussing uh, this uh, this equation. So what I'm going to do in the next slide is to show you that uh, to analyze this limit equation, the value of alpha is very very important. So uh, let me uh, let me give you a very simple example to show you that the value of alpha is critical in the uh, in the analysis of this of this modeling. Uh, so once again, the, the, the problem is the, the value of this excitation parameter alpha. This is the, uh, the, the big deal in the, uh, in the problem. So to show you that this is, uh, it might be critical, consider, go back to the particle system, when, to the case when there, is only, uh, there are only n neurons, not n equal to infinity, but n finite. And you assume to simplify that the reset potential is zero. When there is bankruptcy, you, re you, you go back to zero, and you normalize uh, the threshold for bankruptcy, you assume that this is equal to 1. So you have the interval 0, 1, and you assume that... I'm sorry, I have some problems with the, uh, this. Uh, so you assume that at some point there is one company with 0 depth, one with 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, 4 over n, and so on. And so you assume that you have this configuration for the companies. And so you, have, you assume that you have one company exactly at the threshold. Since this company is at the threshold, it means that there is bankruptcy, there is default. So it goes back to zero. Since it goes back to zero, everybody registers a loss. So it means that everybody moves of 1 over n. And so you see that this one goes to 1. But since it goes to 1, there is a default as well. So it goes back to zero, and so on. So it means that in the, in the system, you have an infinite cycle. The system completely blows up. It keeps jumping uh, at the same s s time t, it keeps jumping. So you see that when you choose this value alpha is equal to 1, you obtain a completely singular uh, behavior, there's a kind of blow up, so you want to exclude that, and it shows you that this value of alpha is really critical for the analysis of the system. So we are going to assume that alpha is less than 1 in what follows, uh, to avoid this, this, this kind of phenomenon this kind of phenomenon, so this uh, infinite uh, cycling. Let me say that alpha less than 1 means that for one company, uh, there can be only one default at the same time, which is quite physical. This is, uh, there is a physical meaning for that. The reason is that if this company goes back to 0, since alpha is less than 1, the kick it might receive from the other companies uh, is less than alpha. So since alpha is less than 1, for example, the, the global kick it receives might 
make the company go from zero to here, and then there is not enough ma there is not enough uh, forcing to reach uh, one once again. So there is only one possible uh, default for the company at the same time. So now I'm going to focus on the case when uh, once again alpha is less than one, and I'm trying to discuss the solvability of this uh, of this equation. So. I'm going back to this mean field equation. Uh, once again, very simple drift, but if you want to generalize, we can. We assume that VR is equal to zero and VF is equal to one. And I'm trying to seek solutions to that equation. And if you try to, to, to seek solutions, the, the real point is to find uh, a good space of solutions. And now you, you can guess that the good space of solutions is completely dictated by the smoothness you impose on this mean counter. So this E of MT, so MT once again, this is the number of defaults up to time T. And so according to the, the, the regularity you impose on this EMT, you completely change the class of solutions you are going to consider. So MT is a counter, so this is non-decreasing. And so the expectation is non-decreasing as well, but you know nothing about the smoothness of this MT. So let me show you what it means, the smoothness of this EMT. So consider a small increment of EMT. So you consider EMT plus H minus MT. So this is a small increment of this, of this signal. Uh, so H is very small, and so you look at this, uh, this increment. So basically, this is the number of defaults you have uh, the mean number of defaults you have between t and t plus h. Since h is very small, and we said that there is only one default at a single time, it's not too far from the probability of observing one default in the interval t, t plus h. So this is what it means when n is equal to infinity. If you go back to the particle approximation, the, the translation of this, the probability becomes a proportion, so this is the proportion of companies that default in t, t plus h. Now you see exactly the physical meaning of that. If you allow this quantity to have a jump or to jump, it means that at a single time, you can have a macroscopic proportion of companies that default. And for me, maybe I'm, f I'm wrong, but this is my proposal, it might be a translation for a kind of systemic accident because you have a massive proportion of a massive number of companies that default at a single time. Once again, you have, there is a macroscopic proportion of companies that default, so uh, um, there is a, a, a crash in, in the system. So really, the, uh, the smoothness you impose on this, uh, on this mean counter is really related to some physical behavior of the system. Uh, so now the, the, the point is to, uh, is to analyze the, the, this equation. A, a, and to start with, you are going to impose uh, some smoothness on EMT. So it, it seems complicated at first step to, to allow EMT to be discontinuous. Uh, or even to be non-differentiable. So to start with, I'm going to assume that this EMT is, is smooth, and I'm going to, 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 to make this completely forbidden. So uh, I won't completely uh, forbid these kind of scenarios. So at the first point, I'm going to assume I'm going to focus on solution E such that uh, EMT is differentiable. So I completely... Uh, uh, throw away the possibility that there is some massive default, and I'm going to see what it means uh, for my modeling. So you see that the good point is that if I assume that this quantity, I'm going to denote this quantity by E. Uh, I forgot to, to put the notation. Yes, this is E. So this, is, uh, this mean is denoted by E, and I assume that this is differentiable. Uh, so uh, if this is differentiable, it means that the probability that you observe a default in TT plus H is microscopic, microscopic when H is microscopic. So this is something which is uh, much more soft, uh, 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 as you can see. And in particular, in the dynamics of the potential or in the dynamics of the depths, you can really differentiate the dynamics and you can write a really a stochastic differential equation uh, for the dynamics up to the default or up to the firing. Now the point is that E is completely connected to the solution itself because it depends on the law itself of the solution. So I'm just going to show you that you can tackle this cycle by a PDE argument. So since now you assume that this is differentiable, it's not very difficult to see that the V 
has a marginal density. So you say that the probability that Vt is in dy has, a some, den has some density Pty. And your Pty, it satisfies a Fokker-Planck equation. Everybody knows that. You have a diffusion process, then you have a Fokker-Planck equation. But the point is that uh, at the boundary one, you have some killing because when you, when you hit one, there is, uh, you go back to zero. So the density, uh, the, the density at one for any time t is equal to zero. Moreover, you have a source term, which is due to the fact that there is a reset in the system. You see that this E prime is the rate of default, or the rate of firing for neurons, and each time you have some default, you go back to zero. So you have a direct mass here. And now the good point is that by some classical analysis arguments, you can connect the value of E prime to the derivative of the density at the boundary one. So you see that you look at the slope of the density at the boundary, and this is exactly connected with the value of this E prime. So you see the cycling in the, uh, in the uh, Fokker-Planck equation. And so you see that the value of E prime is completely connected with the local mass or the mass very close to the boundary, the, the, the mass of companies with a high depth uh, at time t. So uh, this is a translation of the model in terms of PD. So now let me, uh, I don't know how many minutes to have, two, three, four, four. So uh, uh, let me give you a, a, a list of, of results about that modeling. So once again, we, we were interested in first of solution with no blow up. So what I mean by blow up is the case by when E prime becomes infinite. So when I, I, I forbid the blow up, it means that I don't want any massive crash in the system. And there is a first result by uh, Maria Caceres, uh, Jose Carrillo, and Benoit Pertam, uh, so four years ago, uh, three years ago, which says the following. If you are given alpha, so some excitatory parameter, you can find very, very nasty initial conditions. Uh, so very, very close to the boundary. So it means that the company has a large depth, such that for this initial condition, there is no way to avoid blow up. So you cannot uh, make the system in such a way that there is no blow up. Someday you will have a, a, a crash in, in the system. And we, we just proved uh, last, uh, last year with uh, some of my colleagues the, the following converse. Now if you fix if you fix the value of the initial, uh, the initial value of the depth, so let's say everybody starts from zero, then for alpha small enough, uh, you can find there exists a unique solution without blow up. So it means that according to the value of the excitatory parameter, you have or you don't have blow up. And so for alpha small enough, and alpha depends on the initial condition, then there is no blow up, there is no crash accident in the system. And so the point is that we can give some explicit but non-optimal bounds for the critical value of alpha. Just let me just give you a numerical uh, example. So if you choose that there is no uh, uh, unstalling back part in the dynamics, you choose this initial condition, let's say 0 0.8. Then we can prove that if alpha is less than 0 0.10, indeed there is no crash. So this is basically our result. By the result by Carre, uh, Caceres, Carrillo, and Pertam, if alpha is larger than 0 0.54, uh, there will be a crash. And the numerically, uh, the, the critical value we have found is 0 0.38. So this is, you see that with this excitation parameter, you can, you can uh, uh, make, you can allow or forbid uh, uh, crash in, in the system. Uh, so just to finish with, this is, uh, this is uh, a numerical simulation for, the, for this ET. So ET is the, the mean counter. And so you see that in the, re the red line is the case when the, uh, the interaction parameter is 0 0.38. And so the, the curve is, uh, is, quite, uh, is quite smooth. And 0 0.39, you see that it seems that there is a jump. So there is a jump, which means that it seems that there is a large proportion of companies in the system that crash. And so the, the size of the jump is completely related by the proportion of, part of particles or the proportion of companies that crash. Uh, so just to finish with, uh, let me say that we can also prove the, um, the convergence of the particle system to, 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 this, uh, to this solution. So this is uh, 
uh, another work, but there is, this is something we can prove. And I say this because uh, to make the simulation, we indeed use a simulation by using the, the particle system to get this picture. So uh, thank you. If I well understand in your models, the number of defaults uh, is more or less independent of the value VT of the state. You, you are using just the law of MT and That's not the uh, conditional law with respect to some information. Yeah, in, in, in this model, exactly, uh, the, the, the value of the, of the depth depends on the, on the global state of the population. So it only depends on the... Um, uh, on the collective distribution of the population. So this is exactly the mean field assumption, is that you, you, you see uh, the dependence on the other companies is, is very small, but since there are many, many companies, what you see is the, the global, the, the mean state of the system. You, ca you can implement also the, the own depth, the own depth of the, of, the, of the company has an influence on the dynamics, but in this mean field interaction, you assume that the other companies just interact uh, through the, the mean value. So, uh, could you please give a formal uh, description of the equation without uh, uh, modeling? I'm sorry? Without modeling uh, uh, words, formal description, because I do not understand what are entr uh, entry, uh, entrance parameters. Ah, okay. Uh, so, you see that... Uh, uh, no, 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 not, not this one. Uh, later. This one? Uh, where is, uh, okay, this one. What is M, actually? M, M it so counts. Form, formally, formally, we have the W is uh, Brownian motion. Exactly. And so what is the solution of this V? What is the meaning of this equation? So, so uh, the, the meaning, so for, for the neuron, this is, this is the potential. For the company, it should be the depth. And then it counts the, uh, the number of of, of times you observed a default or a spike. What do you mean? So what we are given here, we consider a process, a random process, V, No, no, no. W. You, 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 you are given W and you seek for M and you seek for V. So the unknowns are V and M. So you are given this W, you are given this initial condition and the solution is the pair V M. This is the exactly, exactly. Um, instead of having a constant alpha, could you let alpha depend on the overall state of the system as well? Maybe not on the individual VI, but just say on the sum or something like this. Um, that's a very good question. Um, so we could try, uh, formally we could try indeed. So there could be two ways. The first one is alpha depends on the collective state of the system. And so we could try to, uh, to get some dependence on the law of the system. It could be uh, indeed uh, another modeling. Uh, I don't know the result for the, uh, the, the final translation of the result, but formally we could have a look at this. And surely we could also have a look at alpha depending also on, on V, on the, on, the, on the private state uh, VT. But indeed, we, we, we could have a look at this, yes, absolutely. At least formally. And then I, I don't know the, the final result for the solvability, but uh, we could, yes. Y yes, absolutely. Thank you.